Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of iRacing AI NASCAR Cup Series career mode here on the channel. It's the elimination race of the round of 12. Eight remain at the end of this Charlotte Roval and here you see the points. Now we come in 24 points above the cut line after Talladega really went our way. Bowman can point his way in, so can Truex and Kyle Busch. Bell might need to win this race, but don't really count him out. He's really good at the road courses. If he can get some stage points, he could have an opportunity here today to still advance. I have got some awesome news as well before we really jump into this race. Uh, from here on out, starting in the next episode, you will now see these career mode videos in 1440p instead of 1080. As well, I ordered my new PC and it is on the way. So there is some good things coming in terms of performance and whatnot. So I'm very excited and uh, that will tremendously up the quality and performance of these videos as well as everything on my formula one channel as well which you can check out under formula owen as you can see myself getting underway here in practice though as we have had a really really interesting round a rough first race of the round but when we went to talladega in the last episode we got stage points we got a stage win we got a second place finish so that really propelled us above the cut line to 24 points this was the round that i felt like i could do the best in and i think we're proving that so far now we have the charlotte roble a track that i love and i think we can have a solid day here but we've had uh rough luck in our rookie season at the road courses we went overseas for a reason before our rookie citizen uh in the cup series to do some road racing obviously it hasn't uh seem to help a whole lot here but we're gonna hope that maybe we can get a good effort today in the charlotte roble and that all starts with a good of course qualifying effort here in charlotte so we kick off our qualifying effort two laps to make something happen as we dive down towards turn one and such a fun circuit to drive the charlotte road course is as this kind of really kind of, i guess you could say just shifted the nascar schedules to bring in more road courses after charlotte road course came in that used to be the the third one on the schedule and then it just went absolutely insane and nascar started adding more road courses which in my opinion not a bad thing i think we've got a perfect number of road courses now on the schedule six seven road courses i think is absolutely perfect i don't think you should do any more than that maybe one more tops but definitely don't do any less either i think we've got a fantastic number but i had to do a second lap of qualifying or rely on that second lap because my first lap i missed the bus stop chicane so we're coming through to cross the line here hopping those turtles crossing the line it's gonna be tyler reddick on pole over jay cook and i myself and p18 p19 actually it looks like we'll get shoveled down a little bit further uh you can see in the top of this screen there i forgot to show uh, exactly uh where we qualified with that little tower on the side so we kind of have to rely on the top so you know the story is coming into this race the same as i just mentioned you know we come in 24 points above the cut line alex bowman less than 10 points back but truex kyle bush both 10 points a piece back as well they have some work to do christopher bell with the most work of anybody 25 points below the cut line larson 50 points to the good blaney 49 they are looking pretty good but eight drivers will be left standing at the conclusion of this episode here you should see finally my starting position here and there you have it p19 let's get ready to go racing in charlotte Never forget that finish between Johnson and Truex. You see the stages there, 7, 17, 30. That's the lap they all end on. It's a 30-lap race here now as we are ready to get racing from this Charlotte road course. Tyler Reddick, Jay Cook, rookie, uh, leading the field to the green flag. Reddick with a few wins on the season, but had a first rough round of the playoffs, so he got eliminated as we already have chaos on this opening start. Kevin Harvick goes wide. Cook goes wide. Everybody's all over the place. Truex, Kyle Bush, we've already got playoff implications to kick off this race. Legano having some issues getting going. 
Larson's in the back. Logano and Kyle Busch are stopped. They aren't getting going whatsoever. We're racing, though, as we head down through turns one and two. And NASCAR immediately would call for single file restarts from here on out. Because double file restarts with the Charlotte Roval AI, they do that every single restart. You know how I know this? Because this is the second time I had to do this race. I did it a whole first time and this kept happening, so I ran it a second time. So, single file restarts NASCAR calls uh, from here on out. Otherwise, it would be a complete disaster every restart. So, NASCAR gave them one shot. They saw what happened. There you see Elliot getting into the outside barrier right there on the concrete. That might cause a little, little bit of damage to that number nine. He falls in behind the 41 SHR driver, Ryan Priest. Priest recently picked up his first win of his Cup Series career, Bristol Motor Speedway. As you can see, everybody fan out through oval one and two Ross Chastain just in front of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Chastain not the safest position he's only 18 points above the cut line but Kyle Busch well his chances of advancing in the playoffs realistically are over after already lap one of this race because he actually stopped on track and had to get towed uh, to the pit lane so it's going to be in very, very hard for him to move on here. As you can see myself fighting the 99 of Suarez now as we head down towards that final chicane. Going to settle in just behind him as we go through up on that left curb. Now you can see Hamlin up there side by side uh, with somebody. Couldn't quite make out who it was 29 laps ago in this Charlotte Roval. Now, we do not necessarily have to make a green flag pit stop. It's really close on field because I made a slight error with the feel. So it's really, really close. Like someone might make it, someone might not. And that might determine who's going to win this race uh, it's going to be that close here as you can see myself up the inside now of the 7 of LaJoy. So we passed Suarez, we passed LaJoy. Those two had some beef in real life here at the Charlotte Road Course last year. Now as we have already moved up towards P16 just behind the 17 of Christopher Busher. And you can see myself out of the bus stop really getting some good ground on the exit. And now actually swapping over to the inside of him side by side down into Oval 3. Hamlin on the back of that 24 of William Byron. Both of those drivers looking pretty good uh, in terms of the points there now as you can see us heading back on to oval one here on lap four and a whole line of cars i'm actually going to get aggressive and go to the outside of denny hamlin up the banking we go and we're into the top 15 now we got some time but at the same time not a lot of time Stage 1 ends at the conclusion of lap 7. Hamlin sends it up the inside of the 24. I nearly sent one into the back of the 24. Now we're alongside William Byron for that Hendrick car. We're going to be, of course, uh, in the Chevrolet camp alongside William Byron next season. As we do know, or you guys know, we are going to Trank Coast Racing next season. Hamlin misses turn 1 on lap 5. So I said, don't mind if I do. I'm going to go up the inside, take that position. So that's P14 to our name. I myself, you know, 24 points above the cut line. We don't need to be in stage points depending on what happens. We don't even need to finish in the top 20 today to move on if we're being completely honest here however i would like to finish in the top 10 top 5 even or you know what better get my first one in my cup series career yellow flags this is lap 7 as that's the 45 of kerbo stopped on track so the stage actually gets called like two seconds early as Reddick was about to cross the line to win the stage but Kurt Busch actually stops in oval four and here's why so he actually pancakes the wall not a huge hit but it actually appeared to destroy the tow link in his car. So he would stop out of four like we saw. That brought out the caution literally seconds earlier than it was going to come out. So nobody uh, came into the pit lane. So we would all stay out, get ready to go back racing here for stage two. It was pretty straightforward. Only a couple of drivers in the playoffs had gotten points like Chase Elliott, Christopher Bell, and Alex Bowman. So Bell did get some stage points. And he's 25 points below coming into the race. But... When you're one of the very few getting stage points, never say never, but he was at the very back of the top 10. We're back underway. Single file restarts from this point on, and you can see a lot calmer, uh, way, way more clean as we head down into turn one. Kozlowski looking up the inside of Truex. Truex knows the situation eight or 10 points below the cut line. He needs some help. Kyle Busch is back on track as well. You see Logano in the background. Logano has a 30 point advantage, so it shouldn't be much of an issue for Logano in terms of advancing into the next round of the playoffs, no matter how bad his day goes. Here I am looking up the inside side of that 24 Valvoline machine of William Byron. He leaves the door open. He's going to be respectful here. We're going to be side by side now as we head down towards the double left-hander that takes us back into that transition onto the oval. We got our Alliance teammate of the two of Cindric as well just in front of us. They do a little bit of a switch back on this 24. Get up the inside of Byron. Look at the run we get back onto the oval now as we're going to get clear of this 24. Put the fight to the back of that Menards Ford Mustang piloted by Austin Cindric here as we head down to that chicane though just trying to 
remain civil. It is really hard to get bold enough to take it side by side into the bus stop with other AI. Uh, but 20 laps to go already in this race. Stage 2, if you remember, ends at the end of lap 17. But look at that nice little pass right there on the 2. So that would move us up into P12 after passing the 24 and the 2 on that opening lap of the stage. However, you can see... I kind of got on an island of my own. It was an extremely calm stage two. We're already at three laps to go, and this is basically the vibes I had for the first half of the stage. However, I was quickly running down uh, the 23 of Bubba Wallace and the cars in front of him, so I felt like I might actually still have a chance for stage points as you see Bubba Wallace uh, 11th, Eric Jones currently running in 10th, Bell again running inside the stage points here as we're just getting a little bit closer and closer to the 23, briefly tagging that concrete barrier right there on the exit of the left-hander and then actually just about down to Nova 1, we nearly do it again, but Cindric was hanging with me, but I was still closing in on the 23 and the 43, so two laps to go in the stage at this point, Elliot in 7th, Bell in 8th, Bowman in 6th, two drivers below the cut line getting stage points, Bowman very realistically could advance today into the next round but guess who he's fighting his teammate at Chase Elliott who's 8 points above the cut line coming into this race but Chastain's having a really rough day 27th place right now he comes in 10 points above Elliott at 18 to the good so Elliott is probably going to pass Chastain in the points so now Bowman realistically actually will be fighting Ross Chastain and there's a very realistic chance he could beat him in on points as long as he can finish in that top 10 and, and keep that card clean here I am now final lap of stage 2 all over the back of the 23 of Bubba Wallace we had run him down and the 43 of Jones, but it wasn't going to be enough. And it's going to be Tyler Reddick sweeping the first two stages. Jay Cook second again. McDowell third, who's had a tremendous uh, playoff run, but he didn't make the playoffs. The 41 of Priest as well, a strong playoff run without making the playoffs. But it's going to be Bowman, Elliott, Bell, the only three drivers in the playoffs with stage points in stage two. They did the same thing in stage one. I crossed the line just behind the 23 for P12. Once again, you know, calm stage. Uh, not a lot of chaos here. Everybody would stay out again as well. But Alex Bowman, the way things run right now, going into the final stage, Chastain will be out of the playoffs. Bowman will be in. So will Chase Elliott. Bell as well has a chance to get himself in with stage points and a really good run. But stage three is underway. The eight of Tyler Reddick leads the way down into turn one. Now Bell's going to make it though into the next round he does need Bowman to fall behind that is going to be the only way and he's going to need to fall behind by quite a bit Truex with a moment there looked like he was trying to peek up the inside of Larson Suarez might have caught the barrier there he goes a little bit wide in that Comscope 99 he's still looking for career win number one as this is the 2022 season uh, that we started this career mode in and he has uh, not won at this point in the storyline like he did in Sonoma in real life in 2022 Joey Logano in the background you see all the cars out here on the track Kyle Busch Kurt Busch the Bush brothers running pretty rough today as we know Kurt brought out a caution early on in the race but everybody is sorting things up pretty well and I was able to pass the 23 above Bubba Wallace and now we're putting the fight to the inside of the 43 so I got the go ahead that we were good on field so I said I'm gonna push hard because the AI they might not still be good on field like I am so I might have an opportunity here to gain some positions early on this is a pass for 10th place on this 43 down into that bus stop chicane Jones can't put the fight to us but he is having a tremendous day there for that Richard Petty uh, Ganassi Ganassi uh, the GMS Petty theme whatever the heck you want to call it from last year now as you can see myself actually laying the bumper to one of the very aggressive drivers on the grid of the 14 of Chase Briscoe thank goodness I'm not leading the race otherwise we know that Briscoe would plow through me and wreck himself trying but we came through to six laps to go and now we had run down the 20 the 9 and the 48 i don't want to mess with these guys too much because the 20 and the 48 while well, they're racing for a spot in this round of eight but i had so much speed all of a sudden compared to these three drivers i felt like they might have been saving fuel at this point because we were absolutely flying so we passed the 20 we're going to get to the back of the nine i'm actually going to get into the back of the nine they're not what i intended on doing so we would settle in behind them until the exit of the bus stop up the inside of Elliott here, and now we're going to pass him into turn three. Thank you very much, Chase Elliott. That puts us now into P7 behind sixth place of Alex Bowman. Bowman's got to keep doing what he's doing, and he will advance into the round of eight as Chastain's having a terrible run. Bowman deep into the bus stop. He's going to go wide. He's going to go spinning into the bus stop. He's going to go sliding into the barrier. Alex Bowman has choked a chance at the final eight drivers playoff grid away. He will not advance because he is going to actually be stuck there for a prolonged period of time, allowing Chastain to get past him. So Bowman is out. 
He will not advance, and now Christopher Bell is next in line. Can he move himself on into the round of eight? If Chastain finishes rough enough, Bell actually, on the back of me, he had passed Elliott and then ran me back down, so I think fuel saving is out the window. He can make it. He ran me down past me as well. That moves us back down to P7. Only a few laps of racing, however, to go in this race. We're coming to three laps to go. The 20 there. Nice defensive line in that chicane. I wasn't going to make it too hard on him, of course, knowing his situation, so I I'm just kind of riding behind him. Three to go. Jay Cook, 2.1 seconds behind Reddick as we head down through the double right-hander. My first error of the day is going to be a big one. Into the barrier we go. We missed the apex just overshooting the corner. And our top 10 day is going to be scrapped. You see all the cars passing us, getting the car back going. The two of Cindric as well. That drops us down to about P13 as we get the car recovered. So... Top 10, it's gone. Coming to two laps to go this time by. That was embarrassing. But who can make it on feel and who can't? That's the question. Top 10, not out of the question quite yet here. Now as we get a huge run on the back of this two of Cindric the Caution flies. And it's the 47 of Stenos. What in the world? He has stopped in the middle of the chicane. What in the world has happened? And you can see contact with Joey Logano. This is a whole lap prior. That sent him off into the barrier. It gets way worse. How does he end up in the middle of the chicane, you ask? Well, watch this. I, yeah. The caution comes out. And the race is going to end under caution because we don't have overtime in iRacing AI. Another look at it. I mean, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, Ricky Stenos Jr.? So, as that was developing, he gets towed to the pit lane. But Tyler Reddick leading the race would pit. And the pit lane was closed, giving the lead to Jay Cook, who is going to win the race under caution. Jay Cook takes the lead over McDowell, and sure enough, we cross the line or finish the race under caution. You can see Jay Cook through McDowell, the 31, the 41, Bell, a great result for him. Is it going to be enough? You see Elliot through Byron just listing some playoff drivers. Myself, Hamlin. We end up P12 because of Reddick uh, pitting and throwing a win away. Uh, Larson there you can see with a decent finish as well. But here's how it affects the playoff grid. So... Brian Blaney makes it by 50 points, Larson 48, Byron 35, Hamlin 32, we make it by 29 points, we're P5 in the standings in this round, a great round, uh, won't be looking so pretty going into the next round, Elliott by 27, Logano makes it, Chastain still hangs on by 2 points, Christopher Bell comes up just short, 2 points out, Trubex nearly made it in, 4 points out, Bowman missed it by 12 because of his misfortunes, and Kyle Busch is out by 19 in his final playoff run for Joe Gibbs Racing as it comes to an end. So we move on. We have an interesting round on the way with Las Vegas, Homestead, Miami, as well as Martinsville. It could get wild for the final four fight that I did not expect to be in the fight for, but here we are. What an episode. What a round. It wraps up right here. I'd like to thank you all for watching and taking the time out of your day to support this series. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one after a wild Charlotte Roval Eliminator. Have a great day, everybody.